Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we're checking out my favourite B450 motherboards. It's another top five video and the categories for this one include best ultra cheap, best value all rounder, best of the best, so a no compromises sort of option there, a best micro ATX and best mini ITX. So let's get into it. At the time of making this video, the most affordable B450 boards are coming in around $70 US, while the cheapest B350 boards are about $10 cheaper. So once B350 stock runs out, you can expect the B450 models to drop down a little bit in price. Uh, right now we have ASRock, MSI and Gigabyte all offering entry level boards. Uh, ASUS does have, uh, well, an entry level board, but in typical ASUS fashion, their version costs about 30% more with no justification for the price premium. So we have the ASRock B450M HDV, the MSI B450M Pro 2, and the Gigabyte uh, B450M DS3H. Uh, since Gigabyte spent their entire budget on chokes that they don't actually need, we're gonna ignore the DS3H, uh, which is a shame because that board does pack four DIMM slots, but given their VRM woes on the B450 boards, I just can't touch them or recommend them at this point. Then we have ASRock's entry level board, which looks much better and packs a similar VRM configuration to that of the flagship ASUS and Gigabyte B450 boards, which is a bit embarrassing for ASUS and Gigabyte. The same is also true for the MSI B450M Pro 2, but I'm going to pick the ASRock board because it features a heatsink on the V-Core VRM. Other than that though, the ASRock and MSI boards are really similar. So if you can't get your hands on the ASRock board, then the MSI uh, board will make for a nice backup. I also prefer ASRock's UEFI design, so their BIOS. I just think the layout and feature set's a lot better than that of MSI's. And in my opinion, this is one area where MSI does need to up their game. Overall though, solid entry levels from both ASRock and MSI, but I think the ASRock board will be sort of the perfect entry level option and it will work nicely with a Ryzen 7 2700X. Uh, that said, if you do plan on overclocking, I highly recommend you spend a little bit more money and at least get our best value all round pick. So let's go talk about that one. If possible, I recommend avoiding the entry level boards and just pony up an extra $40 US. I realize that is a pretty big step up in price, but you do get a significantly higher quality motherboard that'll handle any Ryzen CPU you throw at it with ease. The extra investment will also open you up to multiple options and the best include the ASRock B450 Gaming K4, the MSI B450 Gaming Plus, and my personal favorite, the MSI B450 Tomahawk. Now, the options from ASUS and Gigabyte not really good enough to consider in my opinion, which is why I'm only mentioning boards from ASRock and MSI. For me though, the MSI B450 Tomahawk is the standout here. It packs an impressive feature set and at $110 US, you just you can't be beat, at least in my opinion. Uh, it's also a nice neutral looking board in terms of its design, whereas the previous Tomahawk had some red highlights and whatever. MSI has just gone for a black gray theme this time and with a dash of RGB lighting, it will suit all occasions. That said, if you can afford it, our no compromise option, which is just $20 more, I know it's another bump up in price, but frankly, it is worth every penny, uh, but we'll get to that one in a moment. Still, if you're stretching the budget as it is, the Tomahawk is a reasonable compromise and really a great board for the mid range. You essentially get everything you'd need or typically want from a desktop motherboard with the addition of a high quality VRM that operates at safe temperatures, uh, even with an overclocked Ryzen 7 processor. It's great to see that MSI didn't skimp on the VRM components and they certainly didn't skimp on the cooling either, providing nice big heat sinks on both the V-Core and SOC VRM. And the best bit is the heat sinks haven't been covered in some tacky looking plastic shroud. So if you can stretch your budget to about $100 US, then I highly recommend checking out the MSI B450 Tomahawk. It really is hands down the best value all rounder. I don't think there'll be many that can argue with that. Something you still can't find is a micro ATX X470 motherboard. So those after a 400 series chipset board, but in the micro ATX form factor, will be B450 shopping. There are quite a few to choose from and MSI alone has half a dozen options. And I really like the look of the B450M mortar, which will be available in black or white. There are certainly some nice looking micro ATX B450 boards from MSI, but I think ASRock has outdone them here. The ASRock B450M Pro 4 comes in at just $80 US 
And while it might only pack a 3 plus 3 phase VRM, both the V-Core and SOC portions of the VRM feature passive cooling, something no other micro ATX B450 board offers. Cooling on the SOC VRM is important, particularly if you plan on overclocking the Raven Ridge APU, and more crucially, if you plan on overclocking the integrated Vega GPU. For the Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7 series, this is less important, but even so, the ASRock board uh, is still better in terms of features. It does pack two M.2 slots, uh, a full-length PCIe x16 slot, though of course it is only wide for four times bandwidth, uh, and you also get uh, four DIMM slots, four SATA ports, and even a USB Type-C port. So for well under $100 US, the ASRock B450M Pro 4 is a cracking good motherboard, and hands down the best value micro ATX option. In fact, in many respects, it is the best micro ATX B450 board. Okay, the best B450 Mini ITX board, and there are just three options here. The ASRock B450 Gaming ITX AC, the MSI B450i Gaming Plus AC, and the ASUS ROG Strix B450i Gaming. Has to be said, the ASUS model is Quite a nice looking board, but it will ultimately end up being too expensive for what it is. I am anticipating an asking price of around $150 US, and it's really not that much better than what the competitors are offering for much less. In fact, you could argue that for $120 US, MSI is offering a better board. MSI has gone with a more powerful three-phase V-Core VRM featuring a doubler for six actual phases. That said, the SOC VRM is quite weak, so not an ideal board for an APU. Uh, ASUS is probably better in that regards, though. If you're planning on running an APU, the ASUS board's probably too expensive and won't make sense anyway. The ASRock B450 Gaming ITX AC packs a three plus two-phase VRM, which for some reason, ASRock calls an eight-phase VRM. Don't know what the deal with that is, but hopefully we get this sort of stuff sorted out in the not-too-distant future. Anyway, what ASRock's offering isn't a bad board, but for $10 less, the MSI model is worlds better in my opinion. So for me, the MSI B450i Gaming Plus AC is the obvious choice here, and for the price, it simply can't be beat. Okay, so the best of the best, the no-compromise motherboard, who makes the ultimate B450 motherboard? Well, this one is actually the easiest category to work out because it's quite simply MSI with their B450 Gaming Pro Carbon. Damn it, guys, can we just agree to drop gaming from the name of every product? No. Nah. Seriously though, this really is the ultimate B450 motherboard and for just $130 US, that's a steal. In fact, it might very well be the best AM4 motherboard price below $200 US, uh, certainly below $170 US anyway. As a consequence, MSI has managed to outdo themselves on this one. It's a better board and a better buy than almost all of their X470 models, uh, such as the X470 Gaming Plus, X470 Pro, and even the $180 US X470 Gaming Pro Carbon. Power delivery for the X470 Pro Carbon is slightly better. It's a five plus two phase VRM, while the B450 Pro Carbon packs a four plus two phase VRM. Uh, both have double the components though, but no proper uh, doubling mechanism. I'd argue that the cooling of the B450 board is better though. It sports a bigger heatsink and isn't intruded upon by a plastic shroud. In my opinion, the B450 version is a better buy, not just because it's almost 30% cheaper, but because you get Intel dual band wireless AC and Bluetooth 5.0. Uh, the only thing missing are two SATA ports, a third PCIe x16 slot, but I think it's very unlikely that many of you are going to miss those features. Oh, and for those of you wondering, the B450 Pro Carbon uses the RT8894A control, the same as the Tomahawk, and packs a total of eight on-semiconductor high-side 4C029 FETs and eight low-side 4C024 FETs for the V-Core VRM. Again, this is a four-phase V-Core with no doubler. The only problem with MSI's B450 and X470 motherboards at this point in time is their complete lack of voltage offset options in the BIOS. This means for now it's not possible to make full use of Precision Boost Overdrive. Other than that though, MSI has developed the ultimate B450 motherboard with their B450 Gaming Pro Carbon. Well, there you have it, my top five B450 motherboards. Sadly, this time around, there just aren't as many good budget AMD motherboards as I would have liked, um, certainly not as many as there could have been anyway. Uh, Gigabyte and ASUS really did disappoint this time around. ASRock's done a decent job, but it's MSI who's really turned things around. 
Anyway, I hope these picks really help you narrow down the search for the perfect B450 motherboard for your next build. As always, if you happen to agree or disagree, jump down in the comment section below, let me know why, or let me know anything really, just put whatever you want down in the comment section below. And that is gonna do it for this one. I'm your host, Steve. See you next time.